several months back, I, uh, I picked up a book that Sandy had bought for me at a garage sale maybe a year or so ago. And I was cleaning off and just looking for some books and I knew I had a new Sunday night series and a new Wednesday night series and I, I wanted to follow up Elijah, the series on Elijah with, but I wasn't really sure it was something, but I really wasn't sure, but then I picked up this book and just, I was fixing to put it on the shelf and I went like this. Two hours later, I was like, wow, it just blew me away. And the more that I read about it, the more it placed me right square where we are today. And, you know, I've been nudged by God. I've had God whisper in my ear. I've had him run over me with a large truck. <laughs> I've had him take me to the woodshed. But this was a V8 moment. You seen the commercial? Could have had a V8? That was it. You know, I was like, should I really preach on? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going with this. You know? And so that's what we're going to deal with over the next couple of weeks. The nation of Israel uh, came out of captivity. God sent his prophet Moses to speak to them. It says of Moses that God spoke to him face to face. God used a man to lead somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.5 to some estimations as much as 2.5 million people through the desert. <clears throat> I can't lead y'all out of a thumb book. <laughs> <laughs> Where's he going? I don't know, but let's wait till he comes back. I'm kidding. I tried to figure out what the heck are y'all following me for? I'm lost. Jesus was talking about our ministry when he said, if the blind leave the blind, won't they both fall in the ditch? I think your theory is, yeah, but we'll all be together. <laughs> in the ditch. <laughs> it's good company down here. Here's something I want you to think about, and this is what really one of the things that I was focused on. God used Moses like he had never used anyone ever before. But Moses was going to die. And God had stayed in the wing of somebody else. And God was going to use him. See, that's the way it works if we pay attention. If I were to die today, hopefully there would be things that I've taught you that would live on in you. And you would say, remember what Pastor Barry said about this? Or what he said about that? We will always hold on to God's got this. Amen? Amen? We will always hold on to that. I hope. I hope that's something you never let go of. But God's got this. But God is preparing someone who will step in my place. He's preparing someone to step into my shoes. They've got to have a little bitty feet. <laughs> Nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs> Let them try to squeeze that size 5 on that size 10 and see what happens. But God is always doing that. What impact we have, what impact we make in our life, in the momentary blink that we were here, 
can count for a lifetime of eternity for somebody else. And God will always use you as long as you will remain available to Him. And the impact that you have, even though many of us think that our lives are just really insignificant, we, you know, what impact do we have? You need to stop and take assessment of that. And then you have to decide something else on top of that. Do I have the courage to leave God's fingerprints on somebody else's life? I've been blessed by people who have gone on. Amen? Amen. Can we say that? Amen. Can we say that in confidence? Amen. Somebody Amen. along the way touched our lives and had left their fingerprints on our hearts. And when that happened, as we pass on, we leave those fingerprints on someone else's heart. We're not guaranteed forever, but we are guaranteed of an eternity. Amen? Amen. Not forever here but an eternity with Him. That's good news. So Moses dies. And that's where I want to pick up with the story. If you have your Bibles, Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter. Deuteronomy, 34th chapter. That's easy, it's the last one in the... The fifth verse. If you've got to say amen. amen. Here we go. The Mo then, and Moses, a servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab in the valley opposite Beth Peor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Why do you think they, God would let anybody find out where he was buried? They build a church over. Amen. <laughs> they would worship Moses' dead body. I think he was more concerned about that than he was the grave robbers. So God buried him where nobody can find him or find his body. Because that's our habit, right? Our habit is to raise monuments to dead things. Okay. Moses was 120 years old when he died. Listen to this. Yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. Wow. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I, see, I want to get to Joshua in a big way, but I can't leave this. I just can't walk away from this. Sandy and I went on a little mini vacation this past week. Our, uh, our grandson's mom, Mar Mar Mom Marlene, and y'all, many of you know her, she's a psychiatrist, and she went to this, she rented this house. And she said, y'all come over, the weekend's on us. We we're like, yeah, <laughs> okie doke. So we're thinking we're going to go over to this condo and we're going to be, it was over on Apollo Beach. Well, it wasn't a condo as much as it was million dollar homes. And I'm talking five, six million dollars home. And the coolest thing that happened was that the house that she rented was the lady that wrote the, uh, the cookbook for the Daniel Fast. Isn't that amazing? Oh, wow. I mean, we were walking the house, and I said, I got that book, I got that book. They had Christian music and Christian stuff all over the house. We're like, oh, yeah, we're just going to stay here forever. <laughs> I mean, they show up, you know, come back home, and like, who are y'all? We're your family. <laughs> you know, the ones that came for dinner and never left. And it was a beautiful place, and we just rested and relaxed, and I'm in the midst of this on Friday. And I got up and went, oh, my back hurts. I can't walk down those steps again. I just started down the steps and it was like, I made my way to the coffee pot. 
and I was worn out. And I rang for the maid. But she was asleep. <laughs> led two and a half million people and I couldn't brought Brindley downstairs. And it says his eyes never got dim and he never lost his strength. Two and a half million whiny, crying, backbiting, grumbling, oh we should have died rather than be here and be free. <laughs> wow, that sounded like Washington. I don't know. I don't know. i got to think about that. in my life. And the first day there, I went, I'm reading the menu, and I went, in my mind, I went, I wonder what's good. <laughs> You're not paying for it, stupid. Shut up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had shrimp parmesan. Oh, yeah, this is good as, uh-huh, here's the sound. I put it in my mouth and didn't swallow. My, my taste buds were going. They were. Okay, but you're buying me dinner. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We find a way to... Just complain about the blessings of God. We find something to say. <laughs> We're friends. <laughs> and the government now says it's okay. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He went there. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He went there. Okay, let me get back to Moses. <laughs> We have so much good things handed to us, and we are so blessed beyond belief, and I'm, I am headed to a point, that we can't even count our blessings, and yet we're going to go, I don't know, I got it in my mouth, my taste buds were going out, getting in my mind, so it's swallowed, I went, ah, no, oh, there's more, I swallowed in my stomach, went, thank you, 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 you know, you ever had that meal before? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. The bill came and nobody handed it to me. Now, I'm going to say that that was an incredible blessing. We were born, we blessed beyond belief. I mean, we're, we're so grateful to them. But my blessing started earlier that week. I got blessed by someone just out of the generosity of his heart. I had a situation. I was going to have to pay for something I didn't really want to pay for, but I had to pay for it. And they said, I got this. It worked. My blessing really started the Sunday when I got to come in here and worship God. And he said, of my coming week, I got this. So it's just... It's just following. It's just following. It just stands to follow. The question is, are we aware of the blessing? Are we aware of what God is doing? I have heard some of the most ridiculous, whining things about this country. And I'm the one that's leading the charge. See, we forget. We forget the price that's been paid. We forget the men and women who followed a road that we now criticize. Who walked and 
learned and learned and walked and used a word we don't use today at all. I can't tell you the last time I heard a politician use the word sacrifice. You turn on the TV, you ever watch the program where they actually started sacrificing things? Oh, no, no, no. It's all about gimme, 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 my, my, the reality shows. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Let's do a reality show about how hedonistic we can possibly be. For those of you who went to the University of Florida, hedonism is selfishness. <laughs> I had to clear that up, you know what I'm saying, you know. It's just, how sorry, excuse me, how sorry can we be? They have a program called Down South, Party Down South. It is an entire, it's an entire hour of young people, the 20-somethings, seeing how drunk they can get it, and if they can have sex that night with somebody else in the house. That's the gist. Anybody ever seen that program? Jeremy, raise your hand. I know you have. Yes! Yes! Brother Jeremy seen that program. I know. I know. And I guarantee you, he said, I'm going to say this. Jeremy said, Jeremy, hang on. Jeremy saying, uh-huh. That ain't me. Amen. That boy. And that was enough, wasn't it? I'm like, how did, how did, how does this have enough ratings to stay on TV? Oh, I know. But it began here. It goes back to Moses. Moses led people out who weren't going to believe, who weren't going to accept, who weren't going to step into the excellence of what they had. We're going to starve to death. God said, no problem. I'm going to give you bread every day. We're going to, we, we just, we, can we have some peanut butter? No. <laughs> See, God didn't give him peanut butter. Just say it. What did he give them? He gave them quail. As much as they wanted. They got as much as they wanted every day. And then they started complaining about, we don't want one more quail. We're thirsty. Hit the rock, got water. Got to the promised land. Got to the promised land, sent spies over there. Ten of them came back and said, oh, there are giants over there. They will squash us. Two of them came back and said, hey, let's go. We brought back the fruit. It's big. I mean, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. And they spread a bag of pork throughout the camp and they scared the people. The people became afraid. They said, no. God got angry with him. And God said to Moses, step to the right, about two feet. And Moses said to God, remember your promise? <laughs> See, God, you know, remember you promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that God made. I hate when he does that. <laughs> so what did he do? He sent him 40 years into a wilderness wandering. And all those who refused to go into the promised land died in the desert. But in the desert, their clothes didn't wear out. In the desert, their shoes didn't wear out. In the desert, God kept feeding them. And they kept complaining. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning was, was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with a spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord commanded, had commanded Moses. Moses saw this young man. And he stood beside Moses all of his life.
We need that kind of friend in our lives. Hopefully it's your spouse. But I'm going to say beyond it being your spouse. You need somebody in your life who can help you build you up, who can help be there, who can help you assist you, and you can assist them. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we pick friends who get us in trouble. But Moses saw in this young man something worth passing on. See, we don't read a lot about laying on of hands in the Old Testament other than the blessing, Father blessed the Son. But here's a clear, a, a, a clear case of New Testament principle happening in the Old Testament. Moses laid his hands on him and he gained what? Wisdom. wisdom. Now James in the New Testament says, if we want wisdom, we don't have to have our hands laid on us. If we want wisdom, what do we have to do? Yes. Just ask. All you have to do is ask God for wisdom he gives it to you. Without measure. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all the, those signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all the officials and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power of performance, the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of Israel. Talk about big shoes to follow. First chapter of Joshua. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, aid. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you are all you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give you. To the Israelites, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river to the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. Hear this. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Here comes the New Testament promise that was first recorded in the Old Testament. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. He's talking to Joshua. Joshua, who thought it just worthy to be Moses' servant. He didn't have any grand scheme. He didn't think that his face would ever be on a dollar bill. He just wanted to serve. He just found a place to serve and he served it with all his heart. He was a military genius. But he was Moses' servant. And Moses died. That's going to happen. Great men die. Great women die. But someone must step up. And hopefully we live in the shadow of someone who really touched our lives. Who gave us something to live up to. A standard. You see, one of the things that's going on in America today is we don't have any heroes anymore. We make heroes, but then we spend all of our time tearing them down. We want to wreck them, but then we want to destroy them. And if you say, well, isn't that the way it should be, Barry? No, it shouldn't be that way. We should have heroes. But our heroes should be big men and women of faith. Those are the heroes we should adore and those that we should look after. I love it every now and then when Christian stuff slides out about somebody that you didn't know was a Christian. Amen. And you go, wow, didn't know that. When you see them say things and hear them say things that you believe, but because they have a platform, we go, oh, listen, you have a platform every single day. Amen. 
If you're a parent, you've got a platform. If you're a grandparent, you have a platform. And if someone touched your life, let me encourage you to touch someone else's life. Pass the legacy on. At funerals, we say things like, as long as you keep them in your heart, they live on. Well, that's true, but that's not a possession. They weren't a possession when they were around you. They were a gift. So keep them in your heart, but pass them on. Pass them wisdom. And do this. Love them through other people. Joshua, I just, before we get really into the book of Joshua, I want you to understand, look who he has to follow. Amen. Now, it's, it seems this just happens, but... We are a legacy. You are a legacy of Jesus Christ. He left you with word and vision and hope. Joshua, as we're going to read about him, he's going to become a legacy of Moses. Now, when people talk about the great men of the Old Testament, I'm going to tell you they very seldom mention Joshua. And I think he's one of the greatest men that ever lived. If you had to follow Moses, woo, think about it. And he's looking out the tent at <laughs> two million people. be with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Wherever you put your foot, that will be your possession. Wouldn't you love to walk around like that? You know? Wherever you put your foot is your possession. From there to there, from here to there. See, our thinking becomes so small. We think freedom is just this. And this is just the beginning. I've already told you what I'm praying for. I'm praying for this place to be full. I'm praying for the doors to be busted open. I'm praying that a God that's so big that I can step in Joshua's shoes. And so can you. It's not up to me. Relax. We're okay. Even if I am still in charge. But I'm not, have not, never have been. That's the real secret of this ministry. I ain't never been in charge. Sandy's in charge. And we're in <laughs> Amen? We're okay. She's running things. I'm just the clown out front. <laughs> but I believe, I believe that wherever I put my feet, God can provide that for us. I believe he can broaden the territories, kick the markers down. When people say that ain't going to happen, they don't know my God. They don't know what he can do. They don't know what he's capable. Yes, I may be following someone else, but I'm following them as they follow God. Someone will follow me, and I hope I will have the opportunity to spend time with them so that they will know it was never about me. It was they will follow as I follow God. And do it bigger and better than I ever did. I'm not concerned about that. And neither was Joshua. But this is what I'm going to leave you with this morning. And I'm going to close. We'll come back to the first chapter. And we'll talk about some things in there. But I want you to know. Five times. God says this statement in the first chapter. Five times. Now I've told you. If you read over and over again in any text. And the same thing is mentioned. That's what God's talking about. The phrase he uses. He used here. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous. He uses the term strong and courageous five times 
to Joshua. Be strong and courageous. So I got a little curious. What does that mean? Well, I looked it up in the English and it went blah, 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 blah. They didn't tell me anything. So I looked it up in the Hebrew. And I discovered a word that we never use anymore. I'm going to say a word to you and you're all going to go, oh, oh yeah. But we don't use it anymore. But it's a great word. The word for strong in the Hebrew is amets, A-M-E-T-S. This is what it means. You're going to love this. The word, it says, to be, are you ready? Pay attention. Stout. He's stout. That's a good word. See, most of us think that stout is fat. But that's not what stout means. See, I know what you're thinking. He's stout. I'm handsome. I'm not stout. <laughs> This is what stout means. Stout means to be bold, brave, dauntless, firm, resolved, strong, stout, firm, dauntless. That's another, isn't that a good word, man? The way the word courageous is we, we must. And it means, do not tremble. <clears throat> do not be afraid. There has been so much. I want to try to tie this together. There's been so much negative stuff absorbing our lives from the press, the media, every, everywhere around us. We are constantly living in fear. I, I read, I don't know how many times that they were advising to not go out, stay home this 4th of July. Don't go out because there's a big terror alert going on. And that might happen. I mean, I don't know. It might. But then it might not. I've used this illustration before, but I think it fits. The weatherman can say, tomorrow's weather, is a 30% chance of rain. And we will go, oh man, I was going to the beach. We didn't hear there's a 70% chance that it's not going to rain. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? All we heard was there's a 30% chance that it could rain. You're safe unless they say it's a 10% chance in Florida. If they say 10%, it's going to flood. Okay, just so we get that straight. 80% chance of rain, go to the beach. It ain't showing up. But isn't it that way it is? 20% chance of rain, we realize there's 80% that it's not going to rain, but we will automatically assume the 20% chance is going to be right on top of us, our heads. Joshua, we're going to see a man who followed God and who lived out, be strong and be courageous. And if ever there was a call for the American people, if ever there was a call for Christians all over the world, that's the call today. Be strong and be courageous. I listened to that thing, that poem this morning about Johnny Cash. Did you find yourself your chest getting just a little bit bigger as he went on? I mean, I did. I, I felt that. Yeah, come on in here and see what happens. Yeah. That's not Chase said something I thought was prophetic. He said, we were talking about ISIS. And he said, I think we're okay because ISIS will never invade the South. <laughs> and I said, how come, Chase? He says, there's way too many rednecks with guns. <laughs> We're prepared down here. You know, they may show up in California, but they are never going to show up down here. They ain't coming. Because 
we understand things. I'm not saying we got it right. I'm just saying there's a lot of guns down here. And there's a lot of people who won't hesitate to use them. Why can't we have the same attitude about Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit? Christians should not be afraid to use the Holy Spirit. Amen. We shouldn't be afraid. We should be strong and courageous. We should be stout when someone comes against our Jesus. We need to be in a place where we're saying, hey, 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 not here. Not here. We're going to glorify Jesus Christ. We're going to lift him up. We're going to praise him in everything we're doing. We're going to say yes and no. And we're going to stand with that. And there are times where we're just going to have to get on our knees and pray with each other. We're just going to have to do the things that God has called on us to do. I have found out in life that most things aren't black and white. They're gray. They're gray. And in the gray things, it is determined where our faith stands. Amen. In the gray things, we will find whether we're following Jesus or following man. In the gray things, light can shine. We know what it's like to be in darkness and the light shine. We've seen that. But in the gray areas where it's getting a little bit darker each day, let the light shine. That's our focus. That's what we are praised in. I saw a video just this past week of a veteran. A group of people were burning the American flag. Now, we can debate burning the American flag all you want to, and I'll go with you wherever you want to go on that. But, to this veteran, that flag meant something. And he put that fire out and proceeded to show the young man up close and personal what that meant to him. That stout. <laughs> there is a place in the heart of men that is waiting to be touched by God. You. You. Are the conduit by which that heart can be touched. Mm -hmm. Because you've experienced him. You know him. God's calling on you to touch people's heart. To touch where they live and where they're hurting. It's your responsibility because someone's going to follow you. <clears throat> when churches make transition, one of the hard things to do is to leave the things in the past. That's hard to do. But, but my grandma, okay, but we moved on. We've moved on, Amen. I don't think, let me see, there, I may be corrected here. So if you want to correct me, correct me, just raise your hand. But I don't think we use rotary phones anymore. <laughs> I've seen a few lately. I was sure. <laughs> we, we've moved on and some things have been raised and some things, but what I'm saying to you, Somebody touched your life in the past and you hold on to that, but you don't stay there. You move forward. And you become the conduit. You become the person. You become the hope and all the good things they poured into you. You become that. Because that's what Joshua's going to have to do. And friends, I got a sermon that's going to blow your socks off. Joshua's going to walk into the promised land. And you know the first place he's going to go to? He's going to walk up to Jericho and ring uh, the doorbell. Ding dong. 
God said you're supposed to give me your town and everything in it. They say, uh-uh. They weren't real bright. Uh-uh. He said, not a problem. He turned around and walked away. Joshua holds a meeting and tells them how they're going to conquer this walled city. And it's ridiculous what he does. Come back next week, I'll finish the story. Joshua followed Moses till Moses released him into his own greatness. Moses died and Joshua became the man. You have, here's the most important thing I want you to hear today. The old person you were has died. When you came into Christ, you became a new creature, a new creation. So you've got to stop living like the dead man and start living like the man that is alive. Amen. You've got to put that person in the ground for once and for all and walk and live in the newness of Jesus Christ. That's what we're talking about. You live in that out loud and watch out what happens. Because I believe when that takes place, walls fall before she has an aneurysm, <laughs> come on, come on up here. Oh, y'all sit down and get comfortable. Do that grab the microphone. Okay, so this whole sermon has just been, been all over me. I think there's somebody else that's been all over today. <laughs> and I don't want to embarrass her, but I'm going to bring her up for oh, just a minute. Oh, go ahead. Yes, so. yes, yes. <laughs> This is, um, this is my daughter-in-law, Krista. And uh, <laughs> there's somebody that I know that has left major legacies, not just on her life, but on many, 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 many lives. And it was her dad, Stan Morgan, who was a pastor. And I know many of you know that he passed away was in November. And this is, I know he left a, a huge imprint on my son's life during the time that, you know, they lived over there in Tampa, right across the street from him. And Stan had a church plan, just like we have, that had his fingerprints and his legacy all over it. And I took a couple of Sundays off and I went over there with, with them to support Chase to, to see what that church was all about. It was such a funny thing for me because when I went to church with them that day, Stan, I, he, was, he was something I just didn't see coming. He got up there, boy, and he went to town. He was, he was a shouting preacher. <laughs> and he's such a sweet, easygoing, steady man. Boy, he got up there, and when he starts preaching about his Jesus, it was something else. And this is the first time that Chase and Krista have been in church since he's been gone. But he was stout, and he's left, he's left imprint and legacy on Krista. And Chase and many people and I know that those shoes were hard to fill over there but I just know that right now this morning that he's staying so happy that these two work a lot they do they don't it's not that they don't go to church you know because they Chase has always been a church goer and so is Krista but that's been hard. And he was off today, and I'm just so glad they're here. And this whole sermon for me has just been speaking to them about Stan, too, and just all of us. And I know all of us in here can think of somebody. I don't care if you were in first grade or you were in high school or college or later in life. 
You know, I, I got my mom Gladys and my mom and people, Christians who have left major imprints, and I am not afraid to pass those imprints on to not just my children, but everybody, and it's part of the heart of, of what freedom is for me and what I want it to be. And there's so many people in here that have had legacies left on them, and you guys are using them, and we've been talking a lot about spiritual gifts, and I love the word stout. You know, I, I do. My whole family was stout, as in stout. We were consistent. You know, we were stout people. We were sturdy. And um, it is a great Hebrew word now that we've discovered it. But use your gifts. Be stout. Share. And don't forget those legacies that your dad's left behind because you're going to share them. God's going to open doors for you to continue to do that. But I'm just happy the two of you are here today. And I just I just feel Stan's presence. And I feel so strong that he's just been a part of this day. And I love you. Amen. Amen. high school football, the coach had a nickname for me. It wasn't stout. <laughs> but it was close. It was stump. Yeah, stump. Yeah, we had one too. <laughs> I have a good friend who's with Shorty. We always had that. If you've carried a bad legacy or a legacy of sin in your life this morning, all you have to do is accept Jesus. All you have to do is say, Lord, come into my heart. That legacy changes, and so does your future address. You may have had an address that had a bunch of sixes in it, but today, because of what Jesus Christ has done in your life, you can move into 777 Eternity Boulevard and you can stand there forever. He will never leave you nor will he forsake you. You have a legacy in Jesus Christ. You can begin to walk that out today and that's my prayer. For those of us who are in Christ, it's time we started living out loud with gratitude. It's time we started being stout in our faith, unmovable, bold, brave, dauntless, because the days of evil are coming, and they very well may have sanctions on them, but I will not be moved. I will not be moved. I will not be moved, and God will get all the glory. This place is about to explode because we've got a message. We're going to touch lives. We're going to see things are transformed, not because it's our will, but God is raising up children to follow in his legacy. Won't you join us as we begin that walk today? We'll be right here if you need somebody to pray with you. We'll be right here to lift you up. Brother Joe, take us into the hymn of decision right now. 